Hey, this is Ralph Lockley with SoutheasternGeneralContractors.com. In today's video, we're back out on a brand new site. We're in the footing stages where we're digging and excavating the footings, and I'm gonna be showing you that process and some of the things you need to look out for and some of the things that could pop up and how you should address them if, and in fact, you find out that there are things that isn't quite the norm. Stay tuned. So the way we normally set up our job sites is our tradesmen will come out on site. They have to check in when they get here. We've got the uh, security cameras that alerts us. So we're tracking who's on the job site. They check in and then they get started. If there's any issues, they'll contact us in our group. And that's exactly what happened. We had to come out on site. There's a couple of concerns that the, uh, the subcontractor wanted to make us aware. So I called the homeowner after I understood what was going on. We all did a meeting on site. And then we got a soil scientist on site. And here's the reason why we had to do that and why it wasn't just a straightforward process like it is normally. So the concern here is, is that on this particular lot is we've got some areas where there was some water coming up out of the foundation. It's only in like two or three locations. And so what we've done is that we've got the soil scientists to come out, do an inspection, do a compaction test, and give us their recommendations as far as what things we need to do to remedy that. Now, the thing you need to notice is just a prior day or two before we had a lot of rain, so that's probably what's contributing to the high water tables. And think about it, when you're coming out right after heavy rain, the water table is still kind of high. So in the summer months, when it's really hot, the water table goes down really, really low. So that probably wouldn't even be an issue if we were digging this footing in the dead heat of the summer months, but we're not. So we're having to compensate for that. Now, one of the things that we do differently than probably a lot of other builders may do is we already overcompensate in our structural footings. So code, you can go like eight inches thick on a footing. We go 12 inches and we've got the rebar designed in this one already, which help eliminate some of that. But in some sections where we're gonna dig down and we're gonna do what's called undercut here, and we're gonna let it sit for a day or two and see if that water dissipates. If not, we're gonna to have to undercut the footing, which means dig deeper in the footing and then add a level, a layer of, uh, of gravel. So what that does, that allows any water to pass through underneath the footing. So we've already went around, the soil scientists already went around and checked the compaction, and we've already identified the areas that are concerned, and then we're gonna have them undercut those areas today, then come back tomorrow, see if the water table has dropped. If not, then we'll put that gravel there and then do the concrete, and then we'll go for our inspections, but we gotta have that letter showing that we've already had the environmentalists and the soil scientists out on site to check all this stuff. Now I had the homeowner here too, just so I can make them aware of what's going on. And so they're fully on the same page. So that way everybody has the same line of communication when it comes to this stage of construction. So in summary, when you're digging a footing, if everything goes well and you've got a competent and skillful subcontractor that's digging the footings, it typically goes smoothly. Worst case is you get calls like this where you're having to come out on site and you're having to pivot and then they're asking you, the builder or the contractor, or if you're acting as your own GC, what do you need to do? So then that's where you need to know who to call and how to cover this project and cover yourself by calling the soil scientist, the engineer, and in this case, calling the homeowner and then getting with the subcontractor and making sure all of us are talking with the game plan. And then when we get the building inspector out, he's gonna ask those questions. Then you're able to show what, well, here's my documentation, here's the, here's the system I follow. And then that way that inspector feels comfortable that you know what you're doing, that you already anticipated these issues and that you already got them solved before he even comes out on site to do his inspection. So again, this is Ralph Locklear with Southeastern General Contractors. Hopefully these tips and me showing you what we're running to in this job site can help you on a job site that you may do in the future. Take care. Want to see all our videos, learn helpful tips, and keep up to date on all our projects? Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southeastern General Contractors. Let's build together.